Friends, I don't know if you know this, but we just passed the five year anniversary of the GTX 1060 six gigabyte. This thing launched July 19th of 2016. That is half a decade that this card has been around and Unfortunately, it's still a viable option here in 2021. So I wanted to do a video that harkens back to the last time we did this, which was February of 2019, examining how does the GTX 1060 stack up against the RX 588 gig, a card that launched about a year later on April 18th, 2017, where it directly replaced the RX 480. The last time we did this video, it seemed like the GTX 1060 didn't make sense at the price point it existed at with the lack of performance that you would get from it. But it's two years later, there are a whole slew of new games that have come out. And so we're gonna test it in 15 plus different game titles so that you can see and make the decision, especially in the shortage of GPUs that are out there, whether or not you wanna pick up the 1060 or the 580. But before we jump into that, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's UFD Tech video is brought to you by DataCamp. They're an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data skills. You learn at your own pace with interactive courses and hands-on exercises. You don't need any previous data skills needed to get started, and DataCamp has courses for all different skill levels, from data fundamentals and data visualization to data science coding courses in Python, R, and SQL. You wanna take Introduction to Python, R, or SQL? They have that. Data science for everyone? Check. Data manipulation with pandas? Also check. You might be disappointed though, like I was to find out that it has very little to do with the bear and a lot to do with Python, but not the snake kind. Data camp's super easy. You learn directly from your browser. It doesn't require any extra software and you can learn from 350 plus courses designed by top experts currently working in the industry to develop the skills that you need today. You can take a free assessment, which gives you personalized learning recommendations for you to grow your data skills, whether that's to advance your professional career, build new skills, stand out from your peers with in-depth data, analytical skills, and data science certifications. So my friends, invest in yourself today. Use my link in the description box below. All first chapters of Data Camp courses are free. So you can try it for free in case you want to develop new skills, get into the world of machine learning, databases, programming, what have you. Data Camp has a lot for you. Big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video over here on UFD Tech. So a couple things right off the bat before we jump into the benchmark numbers. This is a Zotac GTX 1060, six gigabyte. There is a three gigabyte 1060 that is out there. However, it has less CUDA cores than the six gigabyte edition does. So it's actually fundamentally a different card. The RX 580, however, the only difference between the four gigabyte version and the eight gigabyte version is the VRAM. But at the time it did seem like the eight gigabyte version was the most popular. It was the only one that I ever personally had my hands on in my office. So that's what we're testing here today. Day. And let's go ahead and look at the price point that we're looking at for each of these cards. Now, this is what they're currently selling for on eBay or Macari if you want to buy them right now. I'm looking at sold listings, which means this is what people are actually paying for them, not what people are choosing to list them for. So the average selling price that I can see for the 1066 gig appears to be about $225. That's at the beginning of August of 2021. The RX 588 gig, because it's a better mining card, is going for $325 average price. That's $100 more, and this card costs like $200 when it came out new. How is it $325 right now? What world are we living in? So we're gonna take that into consideration as we make our recommendations between these two cards. Now let's talk about something before we get into the game numbers, and that's power consumption. Running this with my Ryzen 7 5800X test bench, which has 32 gigs of RAM, a little bit of RGB thrown in there. As we were gaming, the total system power for the system with this card in there was 230 watts. On the contrary, with the RX 580, with no changes applied, no undervolting, no under clocking going on, just stock versus stock, we drew 300 watts with the RX 580 system. So that's about 30% more power that you have to account for with the RX 580. Both of those could easily run on a 450 watt power supply. I'd ideally recommend between five and 600 watts so that you're sitting more in the middle of that peak efficiency curve that you get with those 80 plus certified power supplies, but you don't need a whole lot to run either of these. So with that being said, let's jump into the benchmark numbers and see how do these 
these cards perform here in 2021 with a lot of the latest AAA titles as well as modern esports titles. Now I'm comparing these cards at 1080p resolution because that was standard when these ca things came out as well as medium settings. So that's just gonna be straight middle of the road default average settings on whatever game that we're testing it is. If it has a medium setting, I did that. If it doesn't have medium settings, it was on normal or whatever the middle slider portion was. Exact same settings for both of these cards in all of the testing. So let's start off with Horizon Zero Dawn. The GTX 1060 actually won in this one, having an average of 71 FPS versus the 580's nice 69.4, a difference of 2% between these cards. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, however, is where we see that AMD just slaughters the 1060. The Nvidia card got 35.4 FPS average, whereas the 580 got 57.7 FPS average, a difference of nearly 63 percent. Red Dead Redemption 2 has always been a weird benchmark. It's had so many weird results, whether it be my APU testing where the 5600G beat the 5600X in that game with, a, for whatever reason, I can't explain on an RTX 3060. It's also doing weird things here. Fortnite, the competition's a little bit closer. The 1060 wins this one at 157.7 FPS average, whereas the 580 comes in close at 149.1. Cyberpunk 2077 goes to Team Red with a 43.2 FPS average, 1060 only managed 36.6 FPS. Crisis Remastered absolutely goes to NVIDIA here, 68.1 FPS average versus the 580's 47.6. Metro Exodus, not the enhanced edition because these don't support ray tracing, goes to the 580 at 64.6 FPS versus the 1060's 55.1. Valorant was a dead tie, which seems to indicate that we were more CPU bottlenecked as opposed to GPU bottlenecked. Both of them able to hit over 400 FPS, 408.2 on the 1060, 408.8 on the 580. That's margin of error. They're the exact same performance there. The Witcher 3 goes to the RX 580 at 93.1 FPS, whereas the 1060 managed 83.2. Death Stranding, again, the 580 winning there, 90.7 FPS versus Team Green's 83.7. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also going to Team Red at 75.5 versus 1060, 65.4 FPS. Grand Theft Auto 5 handedly goes to the 1066 gig at 127.8 FPS versus the 580's 97.8. Now a card Warzone, RX 580 wins as it does the rest of the games I'm going to mention. RX 580 wins every single one. Got 94.2 FPS versus 68.8, a 36% difference. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 13.5% difference, 60.5 FPS coming in on the 580 versus 53.3 on the 1060. Borderlands 3, 18% difference between the 1060 and the 580. Again, going in favor of the 580 in control. Again, 36% difference here. Huge numbers coming out of that 580. 70.3 FPS average versus the 1060's 51.6. And then Resident Evil Village, handedly. Again, it's an AMD title, so it kind of makes sense going to the 588 gig. 125.9 FPS average versus the 1060's 87.5 FPS. So it seems like in a vast majority of the titles, besides Horizon Zero Dawn, Fortnite, Crisis Remastered, and GTA 5, the RX 580 was handedly the winner, beating the 1060. The 1060 seems to have aged much less well as the 580 has. However, I will have to recommend if you are in the market for a card in August of 2021, you do not consider the 580, but rather you go with the GTX 1060 because of its frames per dollar average. That $100 price difference between these two cards on the open market means that you get 6.75 FPS per dollar versus 5 FPS per dollar on the RX 580. So you're getting more bang for your buck out of the GTX 1060, again, at the current pricing structure. That's $225 for a card that's five years old. That's absolutely insane. On average, in all of the games that I tested, the RX 580 was 13% faster than the GTX 1060, but that does not make up for the nearly 50% price increase you're gonna be paying for this card. The fact that AMD has implemented good drivers that have kept it performing well over the years and the fact that it's still chugging along really well in 2021 probably leads to the fact that it is going to be priced that high. Again, also adding in the mining structure where it's gonna net you better profitability in mining, that's probably leading 
leading to its used price being so high, whereas the GTX 1060 is kind of only really good for gaming at this point, and it does it mostly okay. 1080p medium, you're getting roughly 60 FPS average in all of the games that I tested, AAA titles, in esports titles like Fortnite and Valorant. You're doing really well, getting high refresh rate at settings that you could easily drop down to get even more FPS. So out of the two, especially considering the fact that you're drawing 23% less power on the GTX 1060, this would be my recommendation here in 2021, which is different than my recommendation in 2019. The pricing on the RX 580 made more sense because it was roughly $200. It was going for about like 180 on a good sale. We're no longer in those conditions. If pricing does change, however, do consider that the recommendation would change as things get further away from when this video is published. But those are the benchmark numbers between these two cards, giving you a rough idea of how they can perform in the latest games here in 2021, which one I would recommend at the moment. Let me know what you think. RX 580 versus GTX 1060. Did they hold up as well as you thought they would over the last five years? Are you getting as much performance out of your 1060 as you would have liked the 580? Let me know. Are you still holding on to your cards here in 2021? Have you upgraded? Did you try to sell your RTX like 2080 Ti when the 30 series launched and you sold it for 400 bucks and then realized you can buy 30 series? I want, I, I want to know where you are with your GPU journey down below in the comments. While it's great to revisit these GPUs, I actually really look forward to the APUs that are launching from AMD later this week. You can check out our review on the Ryzen 5 5600G right there, especially relevant as they're launching here on August 5th. I've been Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Cheers.